One of the things that's always blown my mind about homebrewing is just the creativity homebrewers use to make their beer. Whether it's out of necessity or frugalness, where there's a will, there's a beer to be made. Today we're talking to Russ and Steve Cooksey, a father and son brewing duo that has a very creative system for making all grain batches with an electric tea urn. We'll be drilling into their system and how they brew beer when we get back to homebrewing DIY. And welcome back to Homebrewing DIY, the podcast that takes on the do-it-yourself aspect of homebrewing. Gadgets, contraptions, and parts, this podcast covers it all. Today we're talking to the father and son brewing duo, Steve and Russ Cooksey. They're going to discuss with us their creative way of homebrewing all grain batches with a full-on DIY setup that they've created out of an electric tea urn. Support this podcast by clicking on the support link in the show notes. Your support helps keep this podcast on the air and helps us improve the show. You can give the show monthly support by going to anchor.fm forward slash homebrewing DIY forward slash support. Once again, that's going to anchor.fm homebrewing DIY forward slash support. I have an offer going on right now that if you support us at the $4.99 level, I'll send you a homebrewing DIY logo sticker. And that's our way of saying thanks for your gift. So head on over to anchor.fm forward slash homebrewing DIY forward slash support. If you can't give monthly, you can still support us by giving us a review on Apple Podcasts. Your review helps other homebrewers find this show. Another way to support the show is by heading over to our website and trying out Brewfather for free. It's a sleek and easy to use software and you can try it now for free. Go over to homebrewingdiy.beer and click on the Brewfather link. Once again, go to homebrewingdiy.beer and click on the Brewfather link. Feedback is always appreciated. You can send feedback to podcast at homebrewingdiy.beer. Never know, maybe we'll talk about it on the show. And last, follow us on your social media of choice. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all under the handle of at homebrewingdiy. Just recently on our Instagram, we gave away a free Inkbird controller to the user at homebrewghost. It was a very fun giveaway, and always thanks to everyone who was part of the drawing. Now, let's get talking to Stephen Russ Cooksey, all the way from the UK, and let's discuss their do-it-yourself all-grain brewery. I'm sitting here with Steve Cooksey and Russ Cooksey, father and son team who have built a pretty amazing brewery using some materials that I've yet to see in the wild. And so I brought them on the show, thought they should share their brewery with the world. And uh, let's just start talking to them about it. So uh, Steve, uh, Russ, how you doing? Doing fine. Brilliant. Thank you. I really appreciate having us on the show. Awesome. Well, wel- welcome to Homebrewing DIY. Uh, let, let's just kind of start off with uh, talking quickly about the brewery that you've built. Uh, you know, I, I think the thing that intrigued me was kind of the the fact that you built your own electric brewery out of a, uh, out of a coffee urn. Why, why don't you kind of explain to me where you started there? Uh, well, if, if I can like sort of start and give a, an idea of why or the ethos behind it is kind of uh our ethos is trying to make uh the best most efficient sort of good tasting beer we can uh on almost on a shoestring um a lot of the fun for us has been um taking a material that's kind of got a multi-use and adapting it is to exactly how we want to go um so i mean we started off by taking brewery to us see how the big boys doing it and then how can we scale that down? How can we copy that without expending a lot of money? So, um, yeah, if you want, should we just talk about where if the the brewery set up at the minute? Yeah, um, I, I think the best place to start is maybe let's, let's kind of talk about your history of when you started brewing and how and how you started brewing because uh, in our conversation before the show, you talked about that you did start with extracts. 
Let, let's kind of talk about that and kind of work our way into the progressions of how you built your build a brewery along the way. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so uh, going back maybe five or six years, uh, we, I just got some of the some of my dad's old kit out of the attic uh, and got some extracts, poured some dry yeast on the hope for the best and kind of made a mediocre brew, but, um, you know, clocking in at under a dollar a pint. So, you know, that was the appeal at that point. Uh, but my dad going back way back when. So when did you start actually brewing all grain? Um, oh, well before you were a twinkle in my eye. <laughs> yeah. so, so. But you're laughing at probably way before you were a twinkle as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we oh. did it. Uh, I did it again with, with my dad um, way, way back, back in yeah. probably late 70s. Uh, yeah. Sorry, go on. No. But yeah, we kind of... Um, but then when the DME, uh, the, the extract brews wasn't kind of cutting it, that's when we sort of said, okay, let's take the plunge. Let's go back to um, uh, the old, well, let's go back to what my dad was doing back in 70s, 80s and go for the old grain. Um, and that's when we decided to, you know, take this coffee in, as, as you put it, and, and make it into something that we could use. So having researched on YouTube forums and kind of looking at what's out there commercially for the home brewer, um, trying to replicate that the best we can. So the coffee urn, it's not, it's got a, it's got a thermostat, but it's not something we can temperature control. Um, but at least through trial and error, we can, we can find the sweet spot, um, uh, to get the, the mash temperature right. So we started off initially. Let, let, let's, with, let's, uh, oh, God, let sorry. me ask some quick questions about this coffee urn. Hmm. Yeah. What's the size of this coffee urn? In? It's 30 right. litres. It's a 30 litre uh, boiler. The okay. water boiler for making tea, basically. Okay. So, yeah. It, it, and, and just uh, for somebody in the States who might not understand what we're talking about, you go to like a large hotel ballroom. They have a large... Exactly. Uh, they're, they're serving tea in, a, in an electric heater to keep it warm. This is... The, and, and it's kind of that size right uh, 30 liters yeah. is quite large uh, uh what did that run you uh so i've just sorry i've just done the conversion we're looking yeah. at eight us ga- eight us gallon but um yeah that cost us about 70 uh, pounds didn't it yeah so you know about 90 dollars maybe with the current conversion something like that so uh, as an initial starter that's not too not too bad at all and, we, and of course because it's an electric heater we don't have to worry about looking at propane don't have to worry about taking it outside the safety re- safety measures that you might have to take with a propane burner it's it's all kind of regulated and of course with it being it's got a thermostat in there so once we dial the the temperature in we can take our hands off and, and let it do its job okay so like a turn knob thermostat is the idea exactly yeah so we, we can't set the temperature but we can at least set the dial to three and a half and you know we know from experience that that's getting us to the right temperature um but when we initially started with the, with the coffee urn, we were still brewing in a bag so we, we had the the grain in the bag there um which presented itself uh with its problems eventually but that was a big step up obviously from uh doing the extract because i i don't know what um extracts like over in the states but over here would it's it's not great <laughs> you know well i don't think so anyway i, I think um, that when it comes to extract brewing it tends to have the extract flavor right it, exactly it, yeah. it, it's not that like there are people out there if you have good fermentation you have really you're you're careful you can make a good beer with extract but it still isn't the same as an all grain flavor you get more complexity yeah. it's a little more the word I would use is it's a little more subtle and you can do a lot more and you have a lot more that you can adjust. And so mm-hmm. uh, that that that's at least the the way it is here. I would say it's probably the same there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at this point we were we were still in the in the mash bag um, and getting about sixty percent, sixty percent, sixty five percent efficiency when we we're doing the calculations on uh, on my app. Um, but yeah, we we the the beers improved. We could obviously diversify quite a bit with the flavors, uh, alternating the grain and looking at the the hop additions, and you know, broadening it, broadening it out a little bit. But for us, uh, we were missing out on a good quality sparge stage. Uh, we'd pour some warm water over the grain bag, 
but we didn't get the feeling that that sparge water was getting all through the grains, washing all the sugars off that we needed. Um, so at this point, this is where we we stepped up again a little a little bit. Um, this comes from research looking on on youtube reading forums and seeing what's uh, out there in the commercial breweries and uh, we decided that we needed some sort of false bottom system uh so looking online and um, you can buy commercial products that have a false false bottom in there at whatever expenditure we wanted to do, uh, you, you know was out there but um we decided after i think maybe sitting down um having a wander around the the city and uh one it was last last winter, just sort of wandering around. We came across um, what we Wix, which is I guess the equivalent of your Lowe's or Home Depot. Yep. And so so two so two big um, two big planting plant pots. So you're looking 18 inch diameter, maybe 18 inch depth, that fit inside each other. And at that point, we kind of saw well, that's creating its own false bottom. And with a little bit of modification, we got ourselves um, a system where whereby by slotting the two plant pots in each other, drilling holes in the top plant pot, we created this false bottom whereby, uh, okay, we had to do a bit of heavy lifting with the ma- with the grain bag, pouring the grains in- into, the top, uh, into the top plant pot, but we could increase that efficiency of the sparge. We felt like the sparge water was penetrating all the way through the grain, um, and just by... Um, Drilling a hole and putting uh, putting a silicon silicon tube in the bot in the outer in the lower plant pot, we've got a, got a drain going, and you know that it looked very interesting, and I'm sure there would be some uh, uh, some giggles from if if anybody <laughs> saw saw us doing this, uh, especially with one of us uh, on the floor catching catching the work coming out, one of us up on a step ladder, kind of pouring the grains in, but. It it made a lot nicer beer. We 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 found quite a grassy flavour uh, in, in in some of the brews, and a bit of research suggested it might be because we were um, massaging the the grain to get as much of the wort out. And like I I don't know how much truth into that, but when we started sparging with the false bottom in the plant pots, that grassy text that grassy flavour went away and we uh you know we found that our beers were a little bit nicer again. The efficiency went up to about seventy percent. Um so yeah, that was a big step up and for an outlay of let's think fifteen, twenty dollars, you know, once we uh once you do the conversion. So that was a, a big step up for us. Although it was a, still a bit labor intensive in terms of pouring and tipping, it was uh yeah, it made a big difference. And I think that's uh that was where we really started to go for it and uh and I, I kind of want to paint this picture for uh, the world, right? So, for example, you guys are you, – you have this coffee urn, right? And this coffee right. urn, you're, you're brewing in the bag, right? So yes. you're, you're going to do a 60-minute mash in that bag. Yeah. And, uh, and then from there, you, you're, you're finished with your mash. You, you take yep. the bag out. Yep. And then you take your pot, right, and, yep. and, and, and you set the – of just getting this right, you're gonna set the two plant potters on top of the actual kettle, right? We we put that onto a, a tabletop, okay, uh, with with a side drain. So there was a bit of um... <laughs> oh, so the two <laughs> drained out the side, exactly right. Okay. So it was a bit of a, a quick. Can we get the 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 mash uh, kettle under the plant pots? Get the bag out on top into uh, into the plant pots on the table and let it then drain back into. Um, back into the the tea and that's got the most most of the words already in there. And then you're just pouring the hot sparge water over the top, and then it drains in. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's uh quite the setup. And it uh, was. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I, I no, you're fine. I was just saying it, it's quite the setup, but but in the end, it's still maintaining that same function that we're looking for, right? Yeah. It was replicating what um, a, a, a lot of tubing and a pump can do, but you know, with a, a little bit of manual handling. It, to be honest, uh, a lot of the enjoyment there was the fact that while wow, we're doing this on a shoestring budget, and it was fun to kind of, you know, do the manual labour. It was, it was, uh, it was funny. It was. We had a lot of a lot of laughs doing that. But again, we couldn't argue with the results. The bit, the efficiency went up. The flavor got better. We got rid of this grassiness. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the, like the next evolution, if you like, if you like. Yeah, and and to me, it's something where it, I, I think that that's kind of the point of this show, right? Is the mm-hmm. the, the idea that 
we're going to use what we have and we're mm. still going to make great beer. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I'm the type of person that uh, I tend to have a lot of electronics laying around my house. I build all kinds of electronics for my brewery. I still brew in a bag. I do actually still mm. squeeze my bag and I think I make fine beer. But the mm-hmm. idea is that, uh, you know, there, there are times when I really want to sparge. I, I can think of examples when personally I've wanted to sparge just because let's say I'm making a really big beer. Uh, mm. I'm going, I'm trying to hit a, a 1070 or a 1080. I really struggle with that. And my efficiency goes down with, I actually have to put way more grain to hit those same numbers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then it throws my calculations off because then I've now have more grain absorption and uh, you know, you then run the risk of uh, you know, obviously it's simple math to adjust, but the idea is that you have to make all those adjustments. Uh, in, in all reality, I think that that is the the essence of the home brewer, right? Is mm-hmm. the is the do it yourself aspect and the fact that you can you can essentially just see what a brewery's doing, understand yeah. what they're trying to do, and use what's around you to do so. Exactly. That's that's pretty much been the ethos since we uh, decided to take ourselves a little more seriously, I guess. <laughs> and then we never, we never take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, why don't you explain to me the last beer you made with that process? Like, what what, what was in it? Like, what, walk me through yeah. a beer that with the plant pots because I know your breweries changed. So okay, so um, I think the last one was possibly Saftig too. Yeah. Okay, so um, Saftig 2, um, it was a, an iteration. We uh, started off doing a nice uh, IPA um, uh, and then decided that I was going to put a bit more caramel malt in. But essentially, um, the last beer we did with that was um, IPA style, but using Mandarina Bavaria for dry hopping and for um, for bittering as well. So kind of like oh, a single hop beer but using obviously the, the hops at different stages um so let me think i'm just i've just got in the app the app up here so the last it came out at um a grain bill of excuse me um four kilos um and we did a batch size of only 12 liters so the the necessity there was to to get the the abv that we wanted we had to lower the actual the water content because the the, the, this is going on to where, why we went away from the um, the grain in a bag. As the bag was getting too heavy to lift out. So we're on a four, ki- uh, four kilo grain bill. Um, and then, yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, remember the, trying to remember the brew day. We uh, brewed away, 60-minute mash. Um, and then between us, it's uh, just, it was just a case of rushing through... Um, Getting the getting the kettle back under the plant pots and then sparging away, but for that particular beer, when we did the uh, adjustment, we were on a seventy five percent efficiency. So out of the the about four kilos worth of grain, uh, we came out with an uh, original gravity of ten seventy three. Now I appreciate that's because of the the we only put a, a batch size of twelve liters through, which is quite a small batch. Um, and, but and, yeah, we. And so let's talk about then you go into the boil. How yeah. What is your actual? Uh, you're you're in Europe, so what is the 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 power in your outlets? Because here we're one ten. What what is the uh, the voltage on the uh, uh, on the urn that you're using? It's the the voltage over here is two forty. Uh, so it's a it's a lot higher voltage, and so therefore yeah. you, that has no problem bringing it up to a boil, right? No, it's pretty quick. Uh, probably fifteen minutes, and, and we're up to boiling. Uh, so then we uh, obviously the wort was back in the bo- <laughs> back in the boiler from the plant pot, uh, and uh, uh, we had a, um, a recipe to follow when we needed to add the mandarina. I think we added. Uh, you've got the recipe there, or something? Yeah, in fact, so we I'm, added. I'm looking at. It, we just use a little bit of sars to start with to to for bittering, just because to, just to keep with the German um, sort of feel to it. But then it was all mandarin and Bavaria uh, quite late on in the boil, 20 minute addition, and then a hell of a lot, 180 grams um, for five days dry hop. So for such a small uh, size of 
of uh, such a small batch size. There was a lot of dry hopping in there, but the beer came out really, really nice. I've got one bottle left. This is from about 12, 18 months ago, and there's one bottle sat on my shelf, and I, I'm begrudged to open it because it's, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think um, this would be the one that I'd like to brew over and over again. Uh, it's, it's a quite a delicate flavor. It's quite a dark, a dark color because I'm um, using a bit of caramel in there. But the the oranginess from the from the mandarin Bavaria really shines through. It's it's a nice drink, although it's quite heavy at what seven percent something like that. It's uh, it, it's quite an easy drink. So yeah, so, we're really, I'm sounds really like proud a delicious one. sounds like a delicious beer. Uh, uh, one thing I will have you uh, if you can send me the uh, recipe file, I'll make sure that I add the recipes that we talk about in the show, and we'll we'll upload them to the the show notes for everyone. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, and then then you've now made recent changes to your brewery. Why don't Why don't we talk about what you've changed? Because obviously the bag got too big. You don't want to mm-hmm. do that. You want to make bigger batches. So what did you do next? Um, the next thing was the the tea and the coffee and whatever you want to call it. it. It comes with a lid. Now what I did was modify the lid so it, it just actually fit all the way to the bottom of the tea urn. Uh, I then drilled for maybe 150, 200 tiny little holes in it. Uh, bought two, sorry, I think it's five stainless steel bolts uh, that are threaded down to the bottom. So you can actually higher or lower, uh, depending on what size brew you have uh, for the grain. Uh, and that sits nicely on the bottom, either just above the tap or further above the tap, like I say, if you're doing. Uh, a smaller batch so we've always got the cavity underneath the false bottom uh it stops all the grains going through uh and and that seems to have worked absolutely great that false bottom that we made and, and how did you alter the lid so obviously the lid is wider did you use like an angle grinder what how did you actually cut that off it was on a pedestal grinder uh i'm in engineering so i've got um full use of all kinds of equipment at work uh it was just on a pedestal grinder and i just ground the edges until it fit nicely in that's that's awesome and that's a great yeah. way to get a false bottom in i i've heard of other people using things like colanders that they can get to fit down there i've seen a few other ways of doing it but i also like the aspect that you used precise you, you precisely use the right size of holes for yourself so that you, you don't have problems with it getting jammed up right no no, no, I think it was, I think I used four milli, a four milli drill. Uh, it took me about probably two and a half, three hours to do it. That's, that's a lot of holes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, and, yeah. The, the... And so now, obviously, you have a hot false bottom. Let's go through a batch of brew and, and talk about the last one you did with the, with, with the false bottom now. Shall we uh, talk about the stout? Yes, it looks like you guys are okay. drinking it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, perhaps what, what we need to, to also mention is for again the outlay of about ninety dollars, we bought a second uh, identical tier. So what we can do now is we've got uh, the let's call it the mash tun, uh, the one with the false bottom that's, that slides in on top on the tabletop on the countertop, and underneath it we've got um, a second kettle. Which we which we'll use for the boil, ready to go. Um, so we start the day. We'll set out set the grains up. So I'm, I'll uh, give you the the details on this one as we go through. So this is a big stout. Um, we're looking at a nine kilo grain bill, more or less, um, plus a little bit of, uh, of candy sugar as well to really uh, to really bring the gravity up. Um, filled up with about twenty liters of uh, of water. Um, the grain bill goes in. Obviously, the recipe. You're happy to. Sh- uh, we'll stick that with you. Um, and then, while that's happening and mashing away, um, we've got the second kettle, which we can set to boil the. Uh, well, not boil to set the to get the sparge water up to temperature. So there's a lot more hands off here. We've um, we've got a second kettle with however many liters of sparge water re- ready to go. Um, when it comes around to about the 55 minute mark. What we're doing there is again. This is this is quite a manual part of the, of the of the process, which we know we can improve on. This is possibly our next step to improve. But we get a watering can, <laughs> <laughs> pour pour the sparge water in, um, and we've got the the mash tun up top, uh, boil kettle ready underneath, 
And as soon as that uh, 60 minutes is up, we can release, open the taps. It drains into the, the boil kettle, um, which underneath it, and we can start sport, sparging uh, with the pre- pre-prepared water from the watering can. That and it's, is that, although, again, it's, it's, it's manual labour, if you like, and one of us has to go up on a step ladder if... Um, um, because I'm quite a short guy, uh, but even even so, it's it's reducing the the contact time between us and and the brew, which um, I think is possibly a, a good way to go. It's, it's increasing that efficiency, not in, in terms per se of of the uh, of getting the sugars out, but our efficiency in terms of what we have to input to to get the results. Uh, yeah, from this point, the because the the, ke- the the boil kettle's already going, it's plugged in. Um, we're sort of decreasing the time, if you like, from it coming out at uh, work temperature, uh, mash temperature to the boil. And uh, yeah, we're up to boiling. This particular brew, so uh, quite a heavy quite a heavy stout, uh, hopped with um, we did half an hour uh, Admiral and then 10 minutes Willamette. Just uh, 25, 25 grams. A lot of the bitterness came from from the grain bill. Uh, candy sugar also went in uh, into the boil. I'm just looking here. About about 400 grams of Belgian candy sugar, uh, and we we came out with. Excuse me a second. Uh, an original gravity of 1.114, so what, 11, 14. Yeah. What, what was uh, the final gravity on that? I had to leave a lot of sugar behind, right? Uh, 1029. Yeah, so about ten thirty. So it, you're, yeah. you're it, you've got a little bit of malt backbone left, right? Uh, it's you know this is a it's a wonderful drink. Um, it comes in eleven point one percent, so it's it's a big heavy um, stout. I I base the recipe on uh, Oscar Blues ten fifty, which I, I don't know if that's I can't find that in the UK anymore. Which and I uh, you know I, I adored that that drink. I, I'm in um, Denver, Colorado. That's uh, right down the road. Of course, yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, the, the recipe was kind of loosely based on that. Uh, but this was the first beer where we, again, we evolved a little bit. We decided to take the um, take the plunge. We got a keg, a reconditioned keg from uh, a popular soft drink uh, vendor, and uh, we made our own kegerator as well. So for about fifteen, sixteen dollars, we bought a second-hand refrigerator. Uh, drill the holes in, and so now we've got on tap a nice big stout, uh, ready to drink nice and cold in the garage. Which That's is... awesome. Well, why don't you walk me through what you're doing for ment- for fermentation? Is it just room temperature? <laughs> Do you guys have a fermentation chamber? What what is that looking like? Um, so at, at the minute, this the, this is our next step as well. Our, our yeast game needs to improve. We, we appreciate that. Uh, I'm in the Fermentosaurus. I don't know if you guys. Uh, have can get those over there we conical have, fermenter yeah we we have similar things here that are like uh yeah. is it a plastic conical yes yeah. exactly yeah. right with a okay. bo- with a bottom bottom drain yep um unfortunately we've had a we've had a bit of an up and down summer in terms of temperature and at the minute just because of of cost outlay and av- and space and availability we're having to kind of use ambient temperature to um you know, it's ambient temperature fermentation, which is not ideal. We appreciate, uh, you know, that's that's one of those things. But we're taking measures to um, negate any fluctuations by using a lot of insulation. If we're looking at the weather, it's going to be a, a warm week. We can bring it inside, keep it somewhere nice and cold, uh, nice and cool. Uh, conversely, if it looks like it's going to be cold outside, which to be fair, summer's completely gone over here, so we might be bringing it inside to to ferment. But um, yeah, that's that's our next evolution. How can we um, create an environment where we can do a, get a, quite a specific control on the fermentation temperature? Again, with this ethos of not spending a hell of a lot of money, and you know, the aspect of DIY. Kind of, can we do it for ourselves? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's uh, how I built my fermenter. It's uh, an old dorm fridge I bought from somebody. That dorm fridge, I built a platform and a box on the front of it mm. and uh it's actually controlled to the point to where i can actually use my phone and it's all completely diy and so yeah <laughs> my my heater's a, a light bulb in a paint can so yes i'm in a very similar situation with my fermentation chamber uh it, wh- why don't you talk to about the kegerator you guys built uh, do you want to take that Sorry, can, I, can i well can i just interrupt with the for the winter fermentation we did actually buy a very cheap um, heated electric blanket, of which course, we now yeah. have. 
Yeah. Which we haven't used yet uh, because the, the, the temperature's not down enough to, to start using that. But it's a thermostatic electric blanket for, for a bed that we'll just wrap, wrap around it in the garage in the winter. And yeah, that's the job done with that. So, yeah. And you could actually get just a small temperature controller that's uh, uh, like, in, I don't know what they are there, but here you know, on Amazon, they sell a thing called an Inkbird. It's 30 bucks and it gives you dialed temperature control so well that's this is it we've, we're we're always learning so um we, we know <laughs> we, we know where you know the steps to go so uh yeah it's just about uh taking our time and making it work for us yeah really. yeah let's talk about your kegerator you guys built okay uh this is exceptionally simple um a, re- a reconditioned uh keg that we bought off a, a supplier uh in the uk supplier not not too far from us um just just online uh reconditioned from a uh, you know, soft drink ven- vendor uh and looking on on local adverts on, on facebook uh local se- buying and selling forums somebody that would uh, actually deliver us a refrigerator we both got cars that don't well, that we couldn't fit a refrigerator in uh so ripped out the as much of the innards as possible when we got that uh refrigerator and just literally um drilled in the holes for the gas lines i'm on the the, the party tap you know I'd, so quite a simple it's not a, okay. a, a not, you know what i mean yeah yeah you, know, you, like, have, you have the the plastic uh, cobra head tap right that's and, the one yep and reminiscent just, of it yep just open the fridge and pop it out yep, totally. exactly yeah. that works just fine uh, absolutely i mean um in terms of space uh it'd be nice to build something uh, build it into a bit of furniture bring it inside uh but that's again it's 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 the next evolution. Uh, at, at the minute, that's not on, high on the priority list because the uh, the just going outside to the garage and pouring out of the Cobra isn't isn't too much of a big deal. But uh, eventually, we have to bring it inside, get a nice uh, double tap on the um, well, a nice tap so we can you know we can pour inside. It looks nice and part of the furniture. But uh, at the minute, I'm, we're, we're satisfied with what we've got. <laughs> Excellent, a- absolutely. I, I, wherever there's will, there's beer, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> the problem we've got with that is the the more times we go out or go out to the garage in the kegerator for this stout, the the longer it takes to get back. The route seems to sort of meander more. Yeah, it is, a, it, it, is an, it is an eleven percent stout. <laughs> well, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so I, I I I'm super intrigued. Obviously, we sat around and described this brewery in audio but i think what we'll have you guys do is if you could send over some photos uh, we're going to post those in the show notes and make sure that uh if you head over to my website homebrewingdiy.beer we'll we'll post absolutely both these two recipes that you've talked Uh about today we'll also post images of your brewery and uh they've also promised me that they're going to send me pictures of their next brew day so we can see what that looks like and uh, we'll we'll make sure we get all of that uploaded into the show notes for everybody to see. And uh, I I gotta say, you know, uh, Russ, Steve, thank you so much for walking me through this brewery. It's 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 really great to see the ingenuity that's out there when it comes to hey, we just want to build a brewery, and you know, we want to build it uh, our way. And to be honest, uh, if you're making great beer with it. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, if if I might interject, to the 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 beer is actually it's kind of a secondary thing. We I know um, just to spend time with my dad working together. It's that's that's what it's all about. We can spend a, we can have a day together, uh, and the result is whatever the result is. Uh, it's just about spending t- quality time with each other. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, it's uh, that that's the best part about brewing, right? Is the time we spend with our family, and uh, also uh, for me, these projects are as much fun as brewing itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, welcome. Thanks for coming to the show and, uh, and thanks for being on the show. And, uh, Hey, if you, if you, if you ever want to come back and give us an update on something you've built, please come on back guys. We will Definitely. Do. We will do. Awesome. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Once again, I want to thank Steve and Russ for taking the time to have a beer with us on the show. 
and talk about their brewery. If you'd like to see pictures of their brewery and get their recipes, head on over to hobrewingdiy.beer. Once again, that's hobrewingdiy.beer. We'll have more detailed show notes and photos there. And last, if you have feedback for the show, please send us an email to podcast at homebrewingdiy.beer or hit us up on any of our social media channels. We'll be there waiting. And that's the end of today's show. We'll see you next week on Homebrewing DIY.